Oh yeah! Right, uh, today we're not actually playing a, an indie game. Everything will it's be nothing gone. new. This place it's will be completely forgotten. the other direction. This is actually one of the first games I ever played. Certainly, I think the uh, first 3D computer game I ever owned. It came with a family desktop computer. And it's a racing game. I don't know how many of you will actually be familiar with it, but it's one of my favourite games of all time. It's just literally... I, I've obviously tested it on the computer and it, it it's still just as good as I remember it. It seems a bit shorter, but everything is just incredible. For its time, it came out in 1997, it had just some of the best graphics on the PC the that there were that there were people came from everywhere to take advantage of the work opportunities uh, here. 3D MMX stuff. Anyway, years we all prospered. You can actually like see the uh, this cutscene pretty much anywhere on YouTube, so I'm gonna skip it and go straight in for some gameplay. It's very simple. It I'm just gonna turn the sound down a little bit. Oh it's already quite low. Interesting. Right. Ah, yeah, and it was one of the first multiplayer games with internets that there was. In fact, let's go for a championship. New Scorp. That's the car I always used to use. Right, let's go straight in. This game is incredible. And an awful lot of fun. It focuses just on the racing aspect. You don't get any weapons and stuff. And my view has gotten really weird. I should just change that. That's not it. That's a bit better. See, for its time, it's just got the whole look down. Very rustic. It's set on a, a planet that's on the brink of extinction, really. Human race is leaving this planet because there's been an outbreak of some sort of virus. Uh, that used to be a shortcut up there on the right, but I didn't have anywhere near enough speed to make it in. So yeah, the your planet is Io, and everyone is leaving the planet except for a group of racers, because all of the last um, escape pods have left the planet. There's only room for one person more, so the idea of the story, if you could call it that, I mean, not many racing games have the greatest of stories, is to win all the races so that you can get that last ship off of the planet. And it's actually quite, I mean, the difficulty level on this is pretty high, really. Um... It gets more and more difficult as you go on, obviously. And the tracks are very... Uh, they're unrewarding, really. You have to be really careful with the later tracks. There's an awful lot of dead ends. Um, you have to really pay attention to the background. There's various arrows and things telling you where to go. But it can all get very complicated as you're going high speed. Very fast game as well. Especially for its time. But it's still, like uh, things like Sonic, it still seems fairly quick at times. This track maybe not so much. It's very wide open and it's it's the first track so it's not going to be incredibly difficult. Very arcade like um, handling which isn't a problem. It, it's got a really nice learning curve to it. It's very smooth. Now this game normally wouldn't run on uh, Windows 7 or Vista or pretty much anything recent. It came out for Windows 95 I seem to remember. But uh, it's now available. It's been re-released on good old games, GOG, however they would like to be known. And it's actually bundled with its own emulator, so it now runs perfectly fine on any recent system. And I can't really remember what it used to be like when I used to play it, because I don't actually own the old version, or the old computer. But it's pretty spot on as far as I can tell. Runs very smooth. Where are they all going? They're going the other way! Oh, what the... That sucked. Ah, oh, go away! You will not take my lead. I'm doing too well. Yeah, this is uh, pretty much just a straight track. I guess that's 
where the name Beltane comes from. It looks a bit like a belt, and it's sort of got a little loop at the end, each end, I think. So, a lot of the other players are actually coming back towards me on that bit just there, and you just wouldn't see that kind of thing in um in any form of modern racing game, I wouldn't think. I don't think you'd have many cars flying towards you the other way. Anyway. I think I'm doing fairly well here. I'm going to have to get my skills back up though, because uh, it's only going to get more difficult from here. Obviously, if I have trouble with the first track, I'm not going to do very well for the rest of this championship. I used to love the look of this game. I must have been about 9 or 10 when I used to play it, when it came out in 1997. And I just played it for hours. It's the only, well, pretty much the only game I, I had, especially uh, the only 3D one. I had a bunch of weird 2D DOS games, but as soon as I got my hands on this, it was a uh, game addiction ensuing. I'd never could actually beat it though. I've not beaten it to this day. It just got too difficult for me. Especially at that age. But at the same time, I thought I was pretty good at it back in those days. Let's go for the jump this time. But it is so brilliant to see that it's been re-released because I couldn't get hold of it anywhere. And I've wanted to replay this for a long time just because of how incredible it is. Oh yeah! Not really a shortcut or a bonus or anything, but that could have gone much more wrong if I had missed that, and that would have slowed me down a great deal. Final lap, I think we're coming up to the end. Oh yeah, there we go, that is the end. Righty ho. Save game. Oh, I can't save. Continue! On to Rock, R-O-C, and that's much less of a straight track. Oh, that sky. I love how they've done the sky in this. Not amazingly di uh, complex, but it just looks so right. Oh, I used to love this track. It's all blue and red. Such a great atmosphere in this game. They really got down the whole post-apocalyptic thing. It just looks fantastic. Still. you got to remember what games look like at this time. And this was one of the better ones, really. It was one of the first to actually run with the sort of smooth 3D look. And it, it supported all the graphics cards of the day. And so you get this really nice, smooth experience. And the racing, it, it never slows down. You got a good frame rate. And, and you did back then as well, it's not just my <laughs> more modern computer. So it was always a lot of fun. Great looking fun. And I, I used to just love how simple it was. The handling is obviously, you pretty much never have to brake. <laughs> it's one of those sort of games. You just hold down the accelerator button and you steer. And instead of braking, you just slide more when you go around corners. There we go. Which is fantastic fun, really. You just get straight into it. You don't have to learn loads of weird maneuvers handbrake buttons, etc. It's all very much, even if you've never played it before, within minutes you'll just be on the way to victory. Until you get to the later levels where they rape you in the face with their hardness. It happens more often than you think. Especially in older games. I really find that in um, games of recent times they don't actually seem to get that difficult. You keep expecting really hard things to happen. Not Maybe not so much in racing games, actually. And then before you know it, you've beaten it. Now this game isn't a great deal long, but the actual difficulty level and, and the amount of tracks and cars had an, a hell of a lot of replay value to it. But so much nostalgia playing this. It's, it's great. It probably doesn't look like much to um, anyone who hasn't played it these days. But this game was pretty much, well certainly the best racing game of its era. 
but one of the best games completely um, of that time. Obviously, the f one of the first to have the online play, and it, it had a lot of um, it had downloadable tracks as well. So you could say it started off the whole downloadable content thing. Well, not started it, but was one of the pioneers of that whole idea of having extra things you could download afterwards. So it's it definitely a game aware of where the internet was going at that time, and people actually started to make their own. Uh, cars and tracks, which you could download as well. It, they'd obviously host them on their pod fan sites, and I think quite a few are still available to this day, which is just brilliant to see. And so you can still try out people's custom cars and tracks. Luckily for older games like this, there was a lot more people into making stuff for them, and also it was probably a little bit easier in a way because there weren't so many. Parts. Oh, I've just won. I'm not even paying attention. Just sort of <laughs> blitzing on through. We got Nuke. Nuke. This should be a fun old track. Oh, I remember this one. Oh, wow, how fast is that sky moving? It's rippling and waving. It looks great, though. <laughs> I never remember that blue face up there from when I used to play. That's weird. That purple car's called Gamma from my memory. Don't know what the gold one's called. Uh, the white one's Saber or something. I always used to use this one. Scorp, this brown thing. I probably think it's called Scorp because it looks like a scorpion from the front. I'm not going to show you that because the view will go weird and I don't even think you can get a rear view anyway. But yeah, oh, ah, yeah, this way. There we go. I can vaguely remember where to go in this. I did have a little go through each track. Um, just because I had to before recording this. So many memories. Oh, yeah, this way. And it's just, it's really odd how much you can remember from old games that you haven't played for years. I mean, if I was 10 or so, then it's been 14 years since I last played it before downloading this. And I can still remember things like shortcuts. Um, I couldn't remember hardly any of the track names, I could, except for Sewer and IO. I guess they were a bit more memorable. But, um, you remember a lot of the cars, certainly. And that must be a mark of a really well done game. Either that, or just proof of how much time I spent playing this game. Which was probably way too often. But it was, it was that sort of time where you play games with your friends, and you, you come home after school, and it would be computer game time! So obviously you didn't have any homework back when you were 9 or 10, so it was just play outside, play video games, computer games, whatever. And that would be the end of it. Different times, I think. People don't seem to just have fun with games anymore. Well, not in the same way. Now it's all about the uh, extra content and an awful lot of money. This game actually came bundled with my parents' home computer at the time. It wasn't the full game, it, well, it was version 1.0 or something, and it didn't actually have all the tracks that this version has. It's a later one, this is Pod Gold, so it's got a load of bonus tracks, and I think maybe cars as well. But, uh, what's this? I think this is five five ninety nine in dollars on good old games at the moment, and, oh crap, <laughs> that was the wrong way. Hopefully I can still keep my lead. Oh, the little map's showing that there's someone near me down the bottom. But oh, uh, now I'm looking at the map and crashing. And it is well worth a download, even if you've never played it before. It's an awful lot of fun. And if you're English like me, uh, the five dollars ninety nine becomes something like three pounds. So it's not not much. It's sort of your average kind of priced app in the iTunes store, really. And it's that's a lot of game for the money. And if if you haven't played it before, then it's a great insight into gaming of this era, Nin uh, late 90s, mid to late 90s. And if you have played it, obviously you know just how good it is. Especially if, like me, you haven't beaten it before, you'll have a new chance to do it. I can't believe I never managed to beat it, despite 
putting so much hours into it. I guess I was just really rubbish. Or something. I mean, could I have been that bad? Makes me wonder what the first game I actually beat was, actually. I can't remember now. I think it might have been Crash Bandicoot Warped. Maybe. I actually got Crash Bandicoot Warped before the first two. For some reason. I can't even remember why. Or PlayStation 1. And that also remains one of my favourite games ever. But billions of people have done plays through of that on YouTube, so it wouldn't be anything new or different. But this is a bit different. I'm sure there's loads of gameplay videos, but there we go. And still can't save game. Oh, I think this is Bank is the last race in this part of the championship. I think it's four races per thing. Blue Sky for this one. Doesn't look like any bank I've ever seen. But this is set in the future. I love older games set in the future. There's something really interesting about that. Like what they thought the place would look like in the uh, 90s. Well, in the 90s what they thought it would look like in the future. Obviously this isn't set on Earth or anything. It's on Planet Io. But it's, it's really interesting to see and in films of that time as well, how they actually showed the future. I think this has got it down pretty well, actually. Lots of neon lighting and stuff. Uh, crazy buildings. Pretty awesome sky. I'm not doing well this track, am I? I didn't get the early lead. I think I started actually behind everyone else. My memory is terrible. But that didn't happen in the other tracks, from what I remember. But I'm in second, so it's all good. And there's Sabre. The white car in front. I used to use that one occasionally. I think I did that weird thing of when you're younger and you have trouble beating a race and there's always that one car that's in front of you and you're in second and you can just never get past it. So then you're like, okay, I'll retry this from the beginning. And I'm going to use that car because for, for two reasons. Clearly, it must be very fast because it's always in the lead. And also, so that obviously that car isn't part of the race anymore, so it can't get in front of you. And then what always happens, the car you were using <laughs> becomes that one instead, and you look like an idiot. Was it just me, or did that happen to everyone? Because that seemed to be a very recurring theme when I used to play racing games like this. Always be that one guy in front of you, and so you're like, I'm going to take your car so you can't beat me and then your old car just flies past you and yeah I can't remember why I used to use this car all the time I don't think it's the fastest or anything but I'm used to using it now so I did have a little go with uh, Gamma and that blue one Bakar or something weird names and I just feel at home with this one from the nostalgic years of playing I guess it's just perfect handles just how I want it to. Has quite a bit of slide around the corners, but it's easy to catch, and for some reason I thought that was going to go off to the right, so I drove into the wall. Which wasn't the best idea. Also, you had a, you had a uh, pits option in this game, which I've not turned on, which meant that you could actually damage your car, but that, that was something I pretty much never played using, because it was just annoying, really. If you damage your car, you had to find the pits area, and you had to drive in there and stop, and then wait for this weird laser thing to like act on your car for a few seconds and fix it. And it uh, showed you in the uh, damage thing on the right hand of the screen what part of your car was damaged. I can't remember if it actually affected you, if uh, it slowed you down. I, I would imagine it did, otherwise there'd be no point to it. But I do also remember there used to be a cheat code <laughs> Uh, I still remember the code, it was Garug, so Garage without the E, G-A-R-A-G, and you just type that in and it would, f it would fix you. Very weird stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know quite why you'd actually prefer to have that setting on, but I guess it was a time of adding new features and damage was one of them to your car, to make it a bit more realistic, because obviously the crazy sky isn't isn't quite enough for most players. But I'm happy to play it just as a straight on racing, arcade, post apocalyptic, awesome, just weird 
car game. <laughs> and that's first in every race of that championship. Which means I can save! Oh, do I get to type in my name? Yes! There we go. And presumably that is saved. Previous menu. Yeah, it's saved. Cool. So if I go to main menu, because that's all I'm going to do for now. I'll do four checks each time for the championship. And that was pretty awesome. Let's just make sure that is still saved. Because this game used to be a little bit dodgy. Yeah, it is. Brilliant! That probably means I can load up my own stuff as well. And you got all sorts of other options here. Time attack. I think you could race your own ghost as well. You could record... Um, yourself doing a single player time attack and you could upload it to their site and race against other people's ghost cars and things like that it was awesome. Anyway, that's it for now. Bye guys!